Hello and welcome to part one of this project. This video is going to be the first half of it. Hopefully the second half will be released in a couple of weeks, if not next week. This is a project I've been on with for a while and is finally getting completed. So the project in mind is this Land Raider and what I wanted to do was either make one radio controlled or make one ideally with a machine spirit so it's AI controlled. I managed to find a while ago a radio controlled tank chassis off eBay which gives me the tracks and the wheels and the drive sprockets as well as the motors which you can just about see at the back. So the drive sprockets and motors will be at the back like this and then the rubber tracks should work well from a drive function point of view. I put this model together quite a few months ago so what I thought I'd do is I'd have a on off switch under one of the turret ports and I wanted to leave the front gun port to have a motor in it if I ever want to do it in the future. I'll take the top off it now and show you inside and how I decided to set it up transmission wise. With the top of the model off you can now see the gearbox mounted in the back. I basically cut this out of a cheap kit I found on eBay. If I can still find the kit on eBay, I will link it in the description. This is good because then you got the sprockets with it all attached, you had wires attached to it as well. And then crucially, if you're ever making any radio control vehicle tracked, you need to make sure you can actually get tracks for it. And the reason why I picked this kit was just because it would be the rough size for a Land Raider, particularly track wise. So you can see the nice rubber tracks and they go on the sprocket well. Do note that I did have to lower the sprocket so the tracks were still the right length inside. So it's not quite in the top corner like it should be. I also had to cut out all of the sides internally to make sure it's smooth enough and clear enough for track clearance on the inside. And then for the actual road wheels for the tracks, all I did was get some plastic acrylic and CNC machine some circles out and then CNC'd some little circles for the spaces in between, to run in between the track lines on the little teeth on the inside of the tracks. I then worked out, marked and drilled holes in the side so that you can have an axle go through both sides of the inner middle and the top cover and outer sides. And that way I could just put some small, I believe they are M4 Allen key bolts through to act as mini axles. There shouldn't be too much drag on them, it should all work fine with the motors involved. I did also have to get rid of the front mechanism for the door as that sits in the way where the tracks would run. I did find it did need to be Crusader or Redeemer version as you have these, I think they are grenades aren't they, that go over the front of the tracks, grenade launchers. This is great for covering the track as it's very difficult to get any track to go follow the route of the actual Land Raider tracks, mainly due to the lengths that are involved. In the future, I do want to try the new Spartan Assault Tank. However, I'll have to buy a lot of Lego tracks to do that, so that might be a while down the road yet. As for the internals, what I'm planning on doing is having an Arduino board which will control the Land Raider shoved into this corner here. I think four pack of AA batteries sitting on top of the motors, that way you'll be able to access it from the back. Being able to pull this off might hold this on. Well, being realistic, it's probably gonna be held on with tape at first. But eventually it'll be holding with magnets so you can just pull it off to get the batteries out and turn it on and off that way. Lastly, before I continue the frustrating task of putting all these wheels back in and the bolts through, is where the sensors are going to go that is going to control this. So how it's worked, as I don't think I've explained this first, is it's going to have sensors, it's going to have two sensors on the front likely mounted where the headlights are. Then it's going to have a sensor either side under the sponsons and then it may have a sensor through the front door pointing towards the floor. The idea of this is with that in mind, and bearing in mind it's track operated, so it's just two motors, you'll be able to have a sensor that basically operates either track, and then the sensors that mount on the sides, the side mounted sensors will then look at the ground, and if it doesn't see the ground, it will allow it to turn that way. Same goes for having a sensor pointing down to the floor, not 100% whether I'll put one in yet, not 100% if you need it, but with the sensor that points down to the floor, it will then have to see ground at least to a certain degree to be able to follow that track forward. And then what you can do with these sensors mounted to each corner is if the sensor then sees an object that it knows it's gonna hit, it can then stop that track and use the other track to turn it away. 
and then if both sensors then see an object meaning it's going to hit it straight on it can then stop it should be able to code in a way to get it to do a basically reverse back for a second 180 degree turn and go back the other way something along those lines i'll put this model back together and then we'll look over the code i've done so far to start off we've got each sensor marked as a float and there is each echo and trigger pin marked down as an integer there is one of each on each sensor so there's four pairs in total the remaining integers are for the motor pins there's a direction pin for both clockwise and anti-clockwise as well as a speed pin and then i've got m speed for the speed of the motor that we want to run at there is actually two sets of these the other set is just off the screen so you've got a left and a right hand set and then in the void setup we have all of the trigger pins and echo pins marked as inputs or outputs as well as the motor pins there is of course a serial begin in there too onto the void loop you have the digital writes high and low and the microsecond delay for the trigger pins and then the echo pin then reads the pulse coming back basically from the distance sensor this is then repeated for all four sensors after which you have a serial print last line so you can read the value on each of the sensors and work out what the values are when it goes near something. And then we have the if statements that controls each motor. What you do need is if say you've got the right hand front sensor working, that needs to work alongside the left hand side sensor. That is because when the say right hand track is propelled forward, it will turn left into the zone where there might not be any clearance, any ground underneath it. That means in this case, if the side right sensor sees greater than 10 and the left front sensor sees less than 10, then it'll allow itself to move forward on that side of the motor. The corresponding motor for the other side works the same way for the other sensors. If those conditions aren't met, then it'll go to the else statement where it will just stop the motor. And then what I've got so far for if the both front sensors are seeing an obstacle, it will then stop. It will then turn one motor one way and the other motor the other way for a total of 200 milliseconds and then both of the motors will engage to go reverse for 200 milliseconds and then that will be the end of that loop. Now the delay time for this will likely have to be changed, that's just a rough guess to get going along with all the sensor values will have to be changed once it's all plugged in and working. I'm also not sure if more of this will have to be while loops instead of just plain if statements but I'll have to find that out when I try it. But it'll be interesting to see how this code turns out for when the vehicle actually works by the end of the next video. Now that's the first lot of code gone over, I thought I'll go back and show you some of the sensors and where I think the placement should be on the model. So we have a regular distance sensor that typically just come with Arduino kits, you can get pretty cheap. However, it is pretty big, so what I'm hoping to do is to try find some smaller ones. It just depends how good they work if they're smaller that could then essentially go around the headlight area, either sit in front of the headlight on top of it, whereas these are just a little bit big. However, for the side, I'll wait for everything to fall off. And for the side, these should, I'll try to show you this way, these should fit under these sponsons and look at the ground pretty well. Should blend in enough, I'll be able to put some foam board around them to try and blend them into the model a bit better. That way the electrical points can stick through the chassis and go into the center where the board will be. And even where the wheels have ended up being, there will still be gap for the center wires to go through. With it propped up, you can see how if I took the gun off the side of the sponson and then replaced it with a sensor that it kind of fit in, it shouldn't look too out of place either. As well as I should be able to blend it and make it look more like a gun as well. Whether I'll lock the sponsons into the side or leave them able to rotate, I'm not sure yet. While it would make it harder for, to run the wires on the inside, leaving it moving, it does mean that if it's moving, then I can pull this out to tune it in better. If it's either seeing too much of the side or if it's just angled at the wrong angle and it wants to be out a bit for it to work more, effect more effectively, I'll be able to pull it out that way. And then lastly, I will be using Arduino Nano to power it all, mainly because it's small and it should fit in well. I think I'll try to get one of those pin holders so you can just slot it in and then slot wires into each side. That'll just be easy to make it work instead of having to solder it to find out it doesn't work and then unsoldering, etc, etc. Also, I'm thinking, and I would like anyone watching this to write it in the comments below what they think. Would it be interesting to have a video on the Spartan Assault Tank, like I believe I've already said, 
but also have it as a build video where I can put in what you actually need to make one yourself. It could be Arduino, it could have the coding, so it could be a little tutorial on the code as well. So wiring up the sensors, getting them to work, and then actually fitting them into a model so it works correctly with tracks. I personally think it'd be quite interesting. It's something I haven't seen much on YouTube. But if you think it would be, or if you've got a better idea, please feel free to let me know in the description. I have thought about as well a Bane blade, or which one is it called? I think it's called a shadow sword that's got the big single gun on it. Um, doing a radar control version of that, either with a radar control model conversion or just actually with Arduino and infrared remotes. That way you could buy an Arduino starter kit, a couple of extra bits and the model and make a radio controlled shadow sword. And I was thinking you could probably do something like put a little airsoft turret in it do something with a gun so it fires something. I thought that would be pretty interesting to do in a future video. Again, if you think these are good ideas, please let me know in the description down below. And that brings us to the end of part one on this project. Hope you've enjoyed the video. I'll try to film more of the rest of the builds for the next video. This project was started months ago before I decided to put anything on YouTube about it. So I don't have much recordings, unfortunately, but I will do that from now on. Please like and subscribe if you've enjoyed it, and I hope to see you on the next video.